Hi everyone, and welcome back to Pareidolia. Today's topic is examining potential paths for the decline of the US dollar from a historical standpoint. With a few international trade agreements established using alternative currencies like those with China and Brazil, there have been a surge in discussion about de-dollarization leading many to speculate that this signals the imminent demise of the US dollar. However, this video isn't meant to fearmonger about the US dollar's end, because in my opinion, the evidence I've seen suggests that any decline is not going to be soon. The key question isn't whether the US dollar will fall, but rather when will it happen? So let's explore historical declines of other various reserve currencies. It is worth noting that the US dollar attained its role as the global reserve currency only in 1944. So consequently, this suggests that before this time, other currencies or commodities have held this position. Analyzing past reserve currencies can provide valuable insight into the potential evolution of the US dollar as a standard currency. The concept of reserve currencies has been in existence for centuries, and they typically undergo changes over time due to shifts in economies, geopolitics, or finance. By examining the historical trajectories of previous reserve currencies, we can discover reoccurring patterns and contributing factors to their ascent and decline. Starting with the historical background of the Portuguese real as a reserve currency, while this currency lacks the extensive documentation of more contemporary currencies, it still offers valuable insight to us. Its origin could be traced back to 1430, so coinciding with Portugal's commencement of the maritime explorations. The historical figures like Henry the Navigator and Vasco da Gama played pivotal roles in the early days of the Portuguese Empire. With these exploratory voyages, it opened up a new market in regions like Africa and Asia, leading to the Portuguese real's emergence as a predominant global reserve currency, facilitating the first international trade. To gain insight into the potential trajectory of the US dollar as a global reserve, it's imperative that we comprehend the Portuguese real's decline from a esteemed position. So eventually, the Portuguese real yielded its dominance to the Spanish real as a consequence of Spain's ascendance as a more dominant imperial power. Spain aimed to promote Catholicism and secure commercial edge over Portugal. While Portugal initiated explorations of the Atlantic world, Spanish adventurers swiftly penetrated the Americas. Columbus's arrival in 1492 increased the competition between Spain and Portugal as they competed for supremacy and dominance by acquiring new territories. Meanwhile, in 1497, Ferdinand and Isabella initiated monetary reforms and the Spanish real was established as a unit of account in Castile and Aragon. However, it came into dominance with the discoveries of the Americas by Christopher Columbus. So during the mid-16th century, a substantial rise in the global need for silver became evident, driven by a liquidity crisis in Europe and China's emergence into its silver century. Fortunately for Spain, the revelation of vast silver reserves in its American colonies aligned perfectly with this global upsurge in silver demand. The real's emergence as a global currency depended on the essential prerequisite of the simultaneous growth in both the demand and supply of silver. However, simply having the ability to produce substantial quantities of silver coins does not ensure the international stage will adopt and actively seek out one's currency. Another crucial requirement is that the coin must maintain a stable and evaluated value that can rival other coins in the market. The Spanish real had these attributes. Therefore, what was the decrease of the Spanish real? The decrease of the Spanish real was due to the inflation in Europe from an influx of silver, as well as the debt from funding Spanish wars and the emergence of rival currencies. 
The Dutch Guilder was the next to see the spot of the Global Reserve. The Dutch Guilder played a notable role in global reserve currency during the 17th century and parts of the 18th century. Termed as the Dutch Golden Age, this era signified a period of economic affluence and global trade supremacy for the Dutch. The Dutch Republic assumed a dual role as both the foremost commercial powerhouse and the primary source of credit and international finance for trade-related endeavors. Once it secured this position, the Guilder retained its preeminence as a primary currency employed in cross-border transactions throughout the remainder of the 17th and 18th century. Another contributing factor as mentioned when discussing the Spanish real, the currency must have an enduring stability of the currency's value. In this case, the Guilder remained untouched for almost 150 years. Furthermore, the establishment of Amsterdam played a pivotal role. It became a major financing center, attracting merchants, traders, and financiers from around the world, further attracting the Dutch Guilder towards the global reserve. The Dutch Republic solidified the Guilder status as the reserve currency through the establishment of formidable trade networks, notably including the Dutch East India Company and the Dutch West India Company, both of which streamlined expensive international trade. Dutch traders actively engaged in worldwide commerce, while Amsterdam rose to prominence as a pivotal financial hub. However, as we've seen, even the mightiest of currencies have fallen. For the Dutch Guilder, it decreased as other dominant entities emerged and introduced their currencies as global reserves. So the French ascended to prominence in Europe during the reign of Louis XIV. After the decline of the Dutch Empire, the French franc ascended to prominence as the primary global reserve currency. France, a significant economic and colonial force, saw the franc gain widespread acceptance in international trade. Furthermore, French colonial territories in Africa and Southeast Asia bolstered the franc's global reach. This was mostly due to the franc becoming a prominent European nation throughout the 18th century, and the economy thrived due to a combination of robust agricultural and industrial sectors which significantly enriched the global trade. The franc serving as the official French currency played a pivotal part in enabling this international trade. So what was the reason for the collapse of the franc as a national reserve? It would be mainly due to the difficulties arising from wars and societal and political changes as of the late 18th century. It would influence the currency's position in the subsequent century. The tumultuous French Revolutionary Wars and the ensuing Napoleonic Wars brought substantial disturbance in Europe. These military conflicts resulted in economic pressures and the depreciation of the franc, as well as a decline in the trust regarding its stability. Additionally, France lost several of its overseas territories, including those in North America, the Caribbean, and the Southeast Asia. So then, the triumph of Britain marked the conclusion of France's global dominance and set the stage for the onset of the Industrial Revolution. In this era, the pound sterling, with its foundation in a stable monetary system, assumed the role of the world's reserve currency. The British Empire extended over diverse territories, encompassing significant portions of Africa, Asia, the Americas, and the Pacific. This worldwide empire streamlined extensive trade, with Britain serving as a pivotal colonial authority. The pound sterling gained widespread utilization in international trade and financial dealings, chiefly owing to the extensive influence and reach of the British Empire. In the 19th century, the United Kingdom embraced the gold standard, which linked the pound's value to a precise amount of gold. This unwavering dedication to the gold standard instilled reliability and trust in the pound's worth and bolstering its standing as a global reserve currency. The pound sterling found frequent application in international financial dealings, 
trade accords, and benchmark currencies for determining exchange rates. Its steadfast value and the dependable British financial infrastructure rendered it favored choice for the worldwide trade. Therefore, what led to the decline of the British pound? Both World War I and World War II had a negative economic impact on the British economy. The pound's worth was strained by high costs of war, as well as the loss of resources and lives. Furthermore, the balance of economic power in the world changed from World War II. So then, the US dollar assumed a central role as a world's main reserve currency, when the US emerged as a leading economic and military force. So this brings us to our present day where the US dollar currently holds its position as a global reserve currency. A historical examination of reserve currencies offers valuable insight into potential future developments. Throughout history, changes in global reserve currencies have been driven by a complex of interplay of economics, geopolitics, and financial factors. The Portuguese real yielded its status to Spain, which emerged as a dominant imperial power, marking a transition in global reserve currencies. Spain's real, in turn, gave way to the Dutch guilder, as Spain faced economical challenges and the guilder rose as a rival currency. The Dutch guilder assumed the role as the reserve currency for a time, but was eventually replaced by the emerging French Empire. However, the French franc's tenure as a global reserve currency was short-lived, disrupted by the French Revolutionary Wars, paired with the loss of overseas territories, leading to its replacement by the British pound. The British pound, which had earlier acquired its reserve status, ultimately lost it in the manner reminiscing of its ascent, paving the way for the US dollar to take its place. The historical pattern of shifting global currencies underscores the dynamic nature of the international monetary system. This historical context is essential for us to understand the potential future trajectory of the global reserve currency. It appears that the position of the global reserve currency is subject to a finite duration. So consequently, the question isn't whether the US dollar will decline, but rather when. The US dollar appears stable, but this stability should not be mistaken for immutability, as foreseen changes can always occur. So to gain a more profound understanding of the potential time frame for a shift in global reserve currency, it will be imperative to closely examine emerging economies and assess the overall health of the US economy, as well as a pivotal factor lies in the trust invested in the US dollar particularly because it no longer maintains a gold standard backing. Historical records emphasize the significance of this trust in determining a currency's global role. Therefore, trust in the US dollar is a pivotal element to also monitor. History allows us to see patterns of the way global reserve currencies have fallen. Therefore, if you would want to know how long the US currency may stand strong, then it would be imperative to take examples from history and apply them to modern day. With that, thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you for the next one.